Hello, buonasera a tutti. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon all of you. I'm so happy to be here in this festival. I'm so honored to be here in my beloved country, Italy, and my beloved city, Rome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. Dear friends, when I was asked to talk about the challenges faced by human rights activists in hostile environment, I said, we must first come to a clear definition of who is the real human rights activist. Who is the real human rights defender? This is the basic moral question. For me, the human rights defender is every citizen. Dreams, struggles, sacrifices for freedom, justice, equality, democracy, and rule of law. Whether he or she is a famous or not, whether he or she is a leader or member of NGO or not. So I believe that the first challenge faced the human rights activists, the dreamer for freedom, justice, equality, is how to hold onto their principles and not be intimidated. Activists should distance themselves from engaging in unjust government orientations. Any activist who justify any anti-human rights policies should, should not be trusted. The second challenge, facing human rights activists, facing those dreamer and struggler for freedom and democracy is that the repressive regimes, especially in the Arab world, play a big role in defaming human rights defenders and taking advantage of their strict control or relations over different national and international media outlets. Human rights defenders are often identified by these, inter, uh, by these authoritarian governments as someone who follows Western foreign instructions to conspire against their countries. Human rights defender also is often accused as a terrorist or supporter of terrorism. Here, the human rights defenders need to do a lot of efforts to clear this bad image inside and outside their countries. So, dear brothers and sisters, it is not only a matter of defamation, fabrication of lies and rumors about activists 
about the dreamer for freedom and democracy, the struggler for freedom and democracy, and linking their activities to foreign conspiracies, they are also subjected to serious abuses, such as murder, imprisonment, disappearance, and torture. And by the way, we at the Arab Spring countries, this is exactly what is happening to us. This is exactly what we are facing in Arab Spring countries as a revolutionary people, peaceful revolutionary people, as a dreamer and struggler again for freedom, justice, equality, development, democracy, and rule of law. And let me tell you some of the truth. As one of my ways to clear the bad images about our struggle. So this truth you may need to know. Arab Spring was, was not an external conspiracy, nor a passing event or an unnecessary whim. In fact, it was a clear expression that the people, the human rights defenders, the youth, the young, the young people, the women in the Arab Spring were fed up with the regimes of tyrannies, with the regime of corruption and failure. This cry of justice, this cry for justice, was the inevitable response to the decades of injustice, poverty, ignorance, disease, to the decades of corruption, repression, and state failure. This expression turned into a great dream of freedom, democracy, rule of law, and a decent life, and into courage, moral, peaceful commitment, and willingness to sacrifice. Seven years ago, people of the Arab Spring countries went out peacefully with their free will. They gathered in public squares, in the freedom and change squares, to put an end to the indolence despotism, corruption, failure, to put an end to the internal residents and hereditary republics, and to start a new state with the principles of democracy, justice, and human rights values. A new state that will be transformed from being a tool of Operation that kills people and their dreams to a home where every citizen has a place. To a home where every idea can be expressed and every dream can be fulfilled. The youth of Arab Spring succeeded in the first step of their struggle, of their peaceful revolution, and brought down, stepped down the head, the presidents of corruption, tyranny, and mismanagement in Tunis, in Egypt, in Libya, and in Yemen. Then they started moving confidently towards the establishment 
of a state of justice, democracy, and rule of law. But what happened? Unfortunately, an ugly counter-revolution confronted them. A counter-revolution led by the collapsed regimes and the regional and international allies back them. This counter-revolution came with many faces. Invasion, military coup, sectarian militia, terrorism, and war. And have turned our countries into lake of blood and countless bridges. In Egypt, for example, a Sisi's coup has thrown about 60,000 people in prison, including a president choosing in a democratic election that was the fairest ever in the Egyptian history. Now, the world is watching the comic elections of a CC who puts every potential competitor in prison, even when he controlled all the side of the life in Egypt. People in Egypt are detained, tortured, disappeared under the terror of the military coup that believes that they can cover all their crimes under a loose and floating pretext of the war on terror, the war on terrorism. Here you people in Italy, still waiting for justice, are suffering from this tyranny. You are waiting for justice for our Italian young brother, the researcher, Raigini. Another example, Syria. The Assad regimes have killed half a million Syrian, displaced more than 20 millions, and yet tells the world that he is fighting terrorism. He fight terrorism by killing the people, calling and sacrificing for their freedom and democracy. He fight terrorism by killing Syrian people using explosive barrels. He has brought Iran, Russia, to fight Syrian people after he actually was very close to fell from power in 2012. Since then, the Syrian people have been facing Iran, Russia, Hezbollah militia, Iraqi militia, terrorist groups, and on top of them is ISIS. Yemen, another example. The Iranian backed Houthi militia in cooperation with the overthrown dictator Ali Saleh, has carried out coup against the legitimate authority in Sana'a after our great peaceful revolution on September 2014. This coup destroyed Yemen and committed crimes against humanity, as well as led to the internal and regional proxy war. Three years ago, in March 2015, the Saudi 
Emirates Coalition launched their military operations in Yemen. Allegedly, to support the legitimate authority to double the coup and to accomplish the remained part of the transition process in the light of their three references, namely national di dialogue outcomes, UN Security Council resolutions on Yemen, and Gulf Initiative for the Transfer of Power. But the reality tells us something else. The reality tells us that the Saudi Emirates coalition is lying and practicing deceit and is working on implementing their own agenda, which has nothing to do with helping Yemenis or supporting the legitimate authority or with the UN Security Council resolutions. They create armed militias and forces the, for, uh, they created an armed militias and forces that rebel against the legitimate government. They control Yemen's islands, ports, coasts, and oil installations, and refuse to hand over them to the legitimate authority. More than that, they prevent our legitimate president and the leader of the political parties to return to the liberated provinces which like 80% of Yemen land. They prevent President Hadi to return to the temporary capital, Aden, and other liberated cities. They, our government has been banned from exporting oil and extending their authority over all the liberated areas, as I said, which includes about 80% of Yemen. Saudi Emirates coalition in Yemen became an occupier of the country, a destroyer of the national unity, and a serious threat to the integrity of Yemen territory. Now, with the coup of the militia of al Houthi backed from Iran, with the Saudi and Emirates wars, Yemen is facing the most catastrophe, humanitarian catastrophe in the world. We are facing a famine. We are facing a disease, on top of that, cholera. We are suffering from lack of education, lack of access to water, and lack of access to medicine. They kill Yemenis every day. And listen, I'll give you another truth. With all their battle, with all their chaos in our region, they put the banner of war on terror, war against terrorism. So don't you see that terrorism has become more of a brand? Who is fostering and marketing it? I always say that 
failing regimes always exploit extremism and terrorism. They have derived international backing by claiming to fight extremist and terrorist groups. They claim that the Arab Spring has caused terrorism. This is ridiculous. On the contrary, the Arab Spring has exposed how dictators and the powers back them use terrorism to tighten their grip over power and crush demands for democracy and human rights. They always threaten that the alternative is terrorism. In Arab Spring Revolution, it was the biggest non-violent movement, the biggest non-violent movement after Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King. We wanted to show how peace is the only way to establish democracy. We believed that with non-violence, the journey to freedom is less bloody and more guaranteed. This lesson almost silenced the tourists, ideologically and practically. And this is exactly what we have witnessed in the first and second year of the Arab Spring. There wasn't even one single terrorist attack when the peaceful movement of the people had the upper hand. It was only when the crumbling and threatened regime sought to, re to, re to regain power by hijacking the peaceful movement, staging military coup against its outcomes, operations, its people, and confiscating their gains through violent counter-revolutions. I have always believed that tyranny and terrorism feed each other, and that is necessary to consider tyranny like terrorism as a threat to humanity. Both of them are a threat to humanity. It is not fair to make tyrant go unbanished. Every dictator is a terrorist, and every terrorist is a dictator. And there will no path to the holy peace we aspire for until dictators are swept away from our regions and from all over the world. And terrorists are deprived from abusing our religion. From other hand, there is an obvious link between the betrayal of the peaceful Arab Spring on the one hand and the expansion of terrorist groups on the other. When you establish despotism, you establish terrorism. Despotism and terrorism foster one another. Look again, again look what is happening in Syria. The world's indifference to the military coup and also in Egypt. Look what's happening in Egypt and in, in Syria. The world's indifference to the military coup in Egypt and to Bashar's brutal suppression to the Syrian revolution have fortified terrorism. The Syrian regime's slogan was Al-Assad 
أو نحرق البلد الأسد or we will burn down the country and that is exactly what happened that is exactly what they did they slaughtered burned the country to save one man yet the international community was conspicuously silent yet the international community was silent towards Bashar al-Assad's crimes. This silence has given him permission to inflict brutality on Syrian people. The international community betrayed and conspired against the Syrian peaceful revolution. That is what brought terrorism and violence to the country. Western catastrophic failure in Iraq, Afghanistan, and disastrous invasion has fueled sectarian division and civil war. It left the country vulnerable to sectarian militia and Iranian meddling. This created conditions for the cancer of ISIS, for the cancer of Daesh, and all other terrorist groups to develop and spread. Now, we are the people who are sacrificing for freedom, justice, and democracy. We are asked to make a false choice between tyranny or war between tyranny or terrorists between tyranny or occupation between tyranny or militia this choice is presented by the dictatorships and the regional and the international power that back them. They seek to revive or recreate the collapsed dictatorships through fueling, again, coup, militia, invasion, war. They imagine by doing so that they have succeeded in stopping the wheel of history. They think that the sin of destruction will prevail for a long time. But this is not true. This is not true. They are unaware of the power of truth. They are unaware of the power of people who sacrifice for their freedom. They are unaware of the steadfastness of the people who will inevitably win in the end. They don't know that we have third option freedom and democracy. Dear sisters and brothers, other challenge facing those dreamers and strugglers and activists of human rights is that many of Western governments, again, support dictators who violate freedom and rights. In sharp contrast to their claims of support for democracy and human rights, this contradiction between Western governments, slogans, and actual policies has been obvious for everyone. We are more worried now about how this collusion 
and deception might create environment that are hostile to human rights in countries ruled by the authoritarian regimes. I can say that this complicity and conspiracy has contributed to making all the efforts that we made, all the outcomes that we achieved under threat. Or to reach to the dead end. But that will not continue because we don't lose our hope and we don't stop our struggle. And here I want to emphasize a very important point that the spring revolution was not only a movement made for the Middle East. It was a call for all the people around you, around the world, for you people here, for people who's listening now to me, calling them to stand for freedom, justice, and democracy calling them for gathering themselves, calling for transparency, calling your government for the transparency, asking them why do they support the dictators? Why do they support the counter-revolutions? Why are they silence against all the crimes that happened in our countries? So it was a call for all people of the world, included the Western countries, that pretend more transparency, participation, democracy. Arab Spring was a message for you people to stop those dictators and the powers that back them. In fact, dear brothers and sisters, that I said that I will tell you the truth and I will be so frankly and sorry of for my, if I upset someone, but this is very important to you as special the students, special the youth to know. Unfortunately, I feel that Europe has seemingly forgotten the Second World War. And therefore, both the whole world's human rights system in danger. The shameful violation against human rights defenders, only a sign, are only a sign of looming global crisis, who re could pose a major threat to human rights and concept and human history and accomplishment. Donald Trump came to occupy the highest position in the world, opening the door to worst era of return to the chauvinism and enlistment of hatred, isolation, and sacrifice of human rights, whose nation have long boasted, boasted of their respect for human rights with policies based in this sense, the end of World War II. Here, we must confront those who violate human rights all over the world. We must begin as soon as possible. It is shameful to let criminals escape from accountability and punishment. 
It is shameful to let hate and discrimination to spread around the world as if the world has forgotten past suffering and its judgment to distinguish between right and wrong. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, human rights activists, the dreamers for freedom, justice, and democracy face many challenges, such as providing a reasonable solidarity network in a hostile environment. There is no way to escape from overcoming these challenges. Overcoming these challenges will open the door to hope for different people and societies to live freely and with dignity. This is what repressive regimes are trying to avoid by suppressing any demands or ideas that could bring about positive change. As Global Human Rights Network, as global human rights activists, we all need to work together with different members of global civil society, media outlets, local entities and networks, and advocates for human rights worldwide. Let us raise our voices together to say to all the human beings in this world that we can save this world and we can together fight corruption, dictatorship. Let's fight racism. Let's fight together the hatred. Our belief and with all our journey for the freedom for the, all the people around the world, our belief in our peaceful struggle is stronger than the tyranny and the powers back then. We and you will build the state and the world that we aspire for, a state and the world based in justice, democracy, and the rule of law. I emphasize here that no matter, no matter what challenges we face, we and you, stronger than them, we and you, stronger than them, and we and you will eventually survive and win. Thank you so much.